Hi everyone, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloryTutors.com and welcome to this video on using born Haver cycles. Now in this video we're going to go through a worked example of a born Haver cycle and we're going to use it to calculate uh, certain aspects of the cycle as well. Uh, I'm going to show some uh, just a few potential pitfalls that you should avoid as well uh, and I picked an example where um, there could be quite a few of them so I've done that uh, deliberately and we're also going to look at the uh, iron size and charge and what effect that has on what on the lattice entropy of formation. So we're going to start by looking at this cycle here. Now um, this is the cycle that I've pre-drawn out and I've put some arrows on to show how, how it works and I've got the data here as well. I'm going to use this data to calculate the second ionization energy of calcium. Now in the exam they could ask you to calculate any part of this cycle and I've picked an obscure one uh, uh, on purpose to show you how the cycle works. It doesn't matter which bit they ask you to work out, it's all worked out in the same way. Now, if you're not sure on uh, the um, basics of a born haver cycle, then I have done a video on the uh, on introductory stuff. So um, if you're not sure on that and you want to have a look, just click on the link below and feel free to, uh, to browse it. But I'm going to go through this um, with the assumption that you know uh, how to construct a born haver. So, Here's the data here, we're going to add the data. The first thing we need to do is identify where the second ionization of calcium is. So um, we're going to put this in a, uh, we'll do this in green. So the second ionization of calcium is this one here. So this is the enthalpy value that we need to work out, which is this gap here. All the other numbers we've got over here. So we're going to start with this one first, we'll start at the bottom. So this is the enthalpy of formation of calcium dichloride. So um, we look in our data, and we've got uh, enthalpy of formation, which is here, of calcium dichloride is minus 1185. So we're going to put that in there. Let's hope, do this in green so it stands out. So minus 1185. Okay, brilliant. So the next one, we've got uh, elements in our standard states, and we're going to uh, atomize, or we're going to do some, sometimes it's also known as bond enthalpy. Uh, we're going to atomize a fluorine molecule, which is F2. Now, we can see we've got enthalpy of atomization of fluorine here. It's plus 79. But, as you can see, this data is for one fluorine. We need two. So we need to multiply that by two uh, because we've atomized two fluorines to get two X. So um, the answer to that, 79 times two is 158. And that's going to be plus... Okay, all these numbers, by the way, are in kilojoules per mole. Okay, so the next one is uh, atomization of calcium. So you can see we're going from solid to a gas. So atomization of calcium, we only need one of them. So if we can find it, there it is. It's plus 177. So we'll just put that there, plus 177. Okay, uh, the next one is, and you can see here, this is the first ionization energy of calcium. So the first ionization energy of calcium is plus 590. So we're going to put that there, plus 590. Right, this is the one we don't know, but that's what we're trying to work out. So we'll come back to that. Uh, this one, now this is the electron affinity, the first electron affinity uh, onto our fluoride, onto our fluorine uh, atom. Uh, because we've got two of them, so we need to look at our uh, electron affinity, which is this one here, of fluorine, minus 335. Okay, but again... As you can see, this data is telling us the electron affinity of one fluorine. We've affinitized two fluorine atoms, so we need to have two lots of minus 335. So it times that by two. Uh, and what we should get is minus 670. Okay, uh, it's negative because it's exothermic. So uh, that's what the red arrow, the red arrow will symbolize on here. And in the last step, this is the lattice enthalpy of formation. Again, it's different from enthalpy of formation, which is uh, the formation of one mole of a substance, and this would be a solid substance, so I'll put an S there, um, from elements in their standard states, whereas uh, lattice enthalpy of formation is the formation of your uh, calcium, uh, of your uh, solid ionic compound from ions in the gaseous state. So um, this is different from enthalpy of formation. You've got to make sure that you know the difference between that as well. Okay, so the number here is the lattice enthalpy of formation is minus 2580. It's a big, big number. So it's very exothermic, this step. 2580. Okay, 
So what we need to do now is we need to work out the second ionization energy. So we need to use the cycle to work this out. So you can see here, we're starting from here, we want to get from here to here, because this is the value that we we'll want to work out going upwards like that. So um, we start from here, we go from here, it's a bit like a roadblock. Uh, this question mark is effectively blocking our path going that way. So what we have to do is we have to find an alternative route. So instead of going from here to here, we're going to go down here and back up to get to the same stage as we would have done if we could just go directly there. And that's what we're going to do. So we're going to start from this point, but we'll have to go down. So we're going against the arrow. So this number has to change. So that's plus 590. So this is going to, going to be minus 590. Uh, we'll go in next step, which is here, and that's minus 177. Because we're going against the arrow, we'll keep the number the same, but change the sign. So going against the arrow here, so that's minus 158. So put that there. Uh, and then we're going with the arrow here, as you can see. So that's going to be minus 1185. So because we're going with it, we don't need to change, we don't need to change the sign. Okay. Uh, and then this arrow going against this arrow, so that's going to be a plus, because that's negative going that way. Because we're going against it, we change the sign. So that's plus 2580. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to go against this arrow, so that's going to be a plus as well. So that's going to be plus 670. Okay. Now, if you put all that in your calculator, uh, we should get a value that fits in there. Um, and it should be um, a positive value as well, because it would have been an endothermic process. So this is plus 1140 kilojoules per mole. Okay, and you can check to see if this is correct, because if you put all these numbers in, into the uh, calculator, it should all add up to zero, because no energy is not created or destroyed. It is just is purely uh, conserved. So um, that's really, really important. And you should always put the numbers, all the numbers back in, literally stick all the numbers as they are, any calculator and it should come out as zero. If it doesn't, something's gone wrong and you need to go back and check. But um, that's how we work that out. Okay, just the final thing as well, which is iron size and charge. Um, this is really, really important. Um, basically, the bigger the charge on the ion, uh, the more energy is given out when the lattice is formed. So remember, this is the lattice enthalpy of formation. This is this bit here. So the bigger the charge on the ions, we get a more exothermic uh, reaction and this is because we have a stronger attraction between two ions which are effectively more positively charged or negatively charged and they're attracted to each other much more strongly so when they do form to form the final lattice structure uh, then we get a very exothermic reaction so um, calcium and O2 minus you can see they've got a bigger charge than Na plus and Cl minus so this one is going to be more exothermic than that one so the um, size of the charge matters and not only that but the um, size of the ion as well. And the smaller the ionic radius of the um, ions, then the more exothermic your reaction is going to be for the lattice enthalpy of formation. Um, and the, the reason why is because the smaller ions have a bigger charge density, and so therefore the attraction between oppositely charged ions is a lot more stronger, uh, and therefore your um, your uh, reaction will be a bit more exothermic. So, for example, the small ions of lithium and fluorine combining together will be more exothermic than the bigger ions of potassium and bromide ions. So um, you've got to make sure you understand that. And you can explain that in terms of things like charge density um, and um, iron size as well. But um, that's it. Hope that helps. Bye.